good evening. I'm going to cover all the bases right now. <laughs> uh, no matter where you're at, they're covered in the name of Jesus. We thank you um, today. We welcome you, Internet Church, for the hour of power. Um, we pray that uh, you will be blessed today. I pray that you will have a, a good time. I pray that this will speak to you. I'm still dealing with Conqueror Sunday. Um, I just want to go down and just pray. Father, Lord, we just come before you, oh God, just to magnify and to praise and glorify your holy name, oh God. We thank you, Father, Lord, for your mercy and your grace that continues to cover us daily, oh God. Father, Lord, that you renew our minds, our heart in you, Father, Lord, that we have the hope that is anchored in you, that it carries us on day by day, oh God, Father, Lord. We pray today, oh God, Father, Lord, that you will touch someone, oh God, that needs to be touched in that certain area, that they only know it's you, Father, Lord. Father, we pray, oh God, Father, Lord, that those are going through trials and tribulations, oh God, that, Father, Lord, they wait upon you, oh God, that they wait, Father, Lord, that they will be renewed in their hope, in their faith, oh God. Father, Lord, I pray, oh God, that you will bring some out of their afflictions, that you will bring some out of their problems, their troubles, oh God. But God, I pray, oh God, Father, Lord, that they will count it all joy, Father that knowing that the joy of the Lord is their strength, and he has them, oh God. So, Father, Lord, we just thank you on today, oh God. We praise you, we glorify you. In Jesus' name we say, amen. Hallelujah. All right, bless the Lord in that church and all that are in here today. Um, I just first of all want to thank God for our general overseers, Apostle uh, Charlie Ammons and his wife, uh, Prophet Vicki Ammons and uh, our dynamic angels of this house, Pastor Ray and Pastor Danette. Uh, I just want to say I love y'all and I thank God for y'all um, and all the leadership of this house. I praise you. Uh, Sunday, we were talking about Conqueror Sunday. I'll tell you, we had an awesome time Sunday. Oh, man, that young lady laid it down. You know, Nikita, I believe it's Nikita Banks. Oh, she did her thing, and it was so genuine, you know. And I was supposed to go with her, but it was like, no, no, I wasn't supposed to share the spotlight with her. It was all about her because God did something awesome that day. It was a blessing. But, you know, we laughed about it later because we started finding culprits that stole all the time, and it had nothing to do with Nikita, but it was other people. <laughs> I won't go into it. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's laughter is good <laughs> in the house. So I want to talk to you, um, share what a conqueror is. My wife so eloquently put it uh, <laughs> Uh, Sunday, so I'm just going to take what she said. <laughs> the New Testament refers to conqueror as those who gain a surpassing victory, meaning to be completely victorious, to carry away or, excuse me, to carry away an overwhelming victory. We are more than conqueror, present tense, active situation. So I thank God for uh, being a conqueror. Some eight, nine years ago, I had a stroke. And most people that know me now <laughs> look at me like, really? <laughs> we have no idea. Well, yeah, that's what I said really when it happened. Um, on January 7th, 2013, I had a stroke on my left side. And that was the left side of my brain. It was the temporal lobe. And it affected my right side. It affected my arm, my leg. It affected uh, my swallowing. Uh, it affected my memory. It affected short-term, long-term memory. Um, and it was rough. My swallowing, um, it was hard. Um, when I swallowed and I had food, it would get stuck. And I would begin to panic because I, I, I didn't understand what was happening. And then they showed me another way to... Uh, do it. So I, I had to make sure that I drunk water after I um, chewed up some food. But this was all um, overwhelming. It was scary, you know, and um, <laughs> it, it, it shook all of us. You know, I just had a scripture that 
um, hit me up and it said in Acts 7, 9, and 10, and I just kind of paraphrased it, broke it down and said, but God was with him and delivered him out of his afflictions. See, but God, and, 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 and Nikita put it, you know, it's a but God, but God. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times, if God is not in there, he's not controlling the situation or controlling the narrative. And so, but God brings hope when we can't see our way through. It says God, not our circumstances, always gets the last word. So it blesses, it blesses me when I see that. You know, during this time, scriptures started coming to life. And that was one of them. But God, and for a while, I was hearing everybody say, but God, but God, but God. But until you go through, till you experience something, you know, it's just a cliche. <laughs> a nice book, you know. So so it, 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 it touched my heart and it blessed me. I just want to, before I move on, I just want to talk about, I had a, a stroke and I talked about that. And the stroke was... Uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce the word, but it was a certain type of stroke. And this is a common type of stroke. It happens when um, a major blood vessel in the brain is blocked. It may be blocked by a blood clog, or it may be blocked by a buildup of fatty deposits and cholesterol. This is a buildup called plaque. Um, the doctor came in and said, I told him I had a pain in my groin. That was the only sign that something was going on. And he said, well, where you're talking about, he said it's highly uh, unlikely that it traveled to the brain, you know? And so what it basically came down to was I had high cholesterol, high cholesterol. So I had that buildup of fatty stuff in there. So that was one of the things. And so I just want you to be mindful. Uh, I know as a, a, a African American race, we, we like all that good stuff, but we're getting a little older. So be mindful of that. So anyway, I want to go in. And so that's what happened on January 13th, but I kind of want to back you up a little bit. The year before, because the year before had a lot to do with the outcome of January 7, 2013. During this period, I was having rough times. I wanted to throw the towel in. I was tired of picking myself up off the canvas of life. I felt like somebody punched me in the gut and I couldn't breathe. I felt pressed on every side, trouble, perplexed, unsure of finding a way out with a warped thinking. I felt like I was in quicksand. How many people have been there? Mm. Drowning a slow death. I was mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually drained. My thoughts were unholy toward myself and people who I believed to be my friends that abandoned me during my times of trouble. I was in counseling with several people, but somehow <laughs> they all left me, you know? One retired, the other one moved on, was supposed to turn me over to somebody else, never happened. So you could just imagine how you feel there. Mm. There was a truly a war going on in my soul, my mind. No matter where I went, I could not find any peace. I was depressed, withdrawn, frustrated, angry, bitter, vindictive, isolated from everyone trusting no one Ecclesiastes 4 says 4 and 10 if one person falls the other can reach out and help but someone who falls alone is in real trouble I was that dude I was li literally self-destructing right before my eyes I was doing everything I could to hold on things got so bad I began entertaining thoughts of going postal on my job. I had a list of candidates that I was gonna take out. During this time, the enemy became the dominated voice in my ear. I no longer put on the full arm of God. So meaning if I didn't put that on, that means I wasn't even praying. I was struggling. But 
I still was depressed, but I still had a glimmer of hope. There was still, don't you remember the stoves, the gas stoves, and we had that little pilot light? I had that pilot light inside of me. Even though I was going through, I could hear the voices of the enemy. I would get up in the morning with my wife on my days off. And I would stay and walk around the house with her because at this time she was working and I would wait for her to leave. And as soon as she left, I went right back to bed. I went back to bed with my thoughts, but I like to throw up, but God. And during this time, I needed something to help me I needed something to help me shut my mind and cope with the pain. So I rekindled an old relationship with Mr. Hennessy <laughs> and Mr. Bacardi 151. Two of my good friends, we were Navy buddies who really lifted my spirits. Now, mind you, I was delivered from alcohol delivered. When I got saved, the Lord took it away from me. But I needed something to cope with that pain. I understand when people um, are in addictions and they're going through, they need something. I get it. So I was an undercover um, drinker, alcoholic, whatever you want to call it. And so during this time, my body started breaking down colds, migraine headaches, mm, ear infections. And on top of that, I had horrible eating habits, high cholesterol, hypertension, stress, lack of sleep, because my mind would never shut down. There were times I blacked out, or you can say dizzy, dizziness. I was at work, and I'm standing here, but I was over there by the speaker, and when I came to, I was standing here like, how did I get here? And at that time, they call them, they said, uh, you might have been having uh, many strokes, TIAs. And what they do is, they're, 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 they don't, they, they may, uh, there's a temporary blockage. There's a temporary blockage, but it's not a permanent thing. So it comes, hits, and then it releases, and you go back to normal. But I had a lot of those. And I didn't know what was going on. I was fearful, but I kept pushing. Like I said, my doctor said, that's what I probably had. Psalms 31 and 10. I, I am dying from grief. My years are shortened by sadness. Sin has drained my strength, and I am wasting away within. I was literally, literally wasting away within myself. I was struggling. And I didn't know how to break the cycle. My eyes were growing dim. And when I mean by growing dim, the darkness that was there. But I mustered up enough strength to encourage myself to hold on. Help was coming. And that word right there, hold on, that was my word. That's my, as a matter of fact, that's my still my go-to word. Because you have to encourage yourself. David is that example. Getting ready for work one day, I went into the upper room before leaving for work. I was, excuse me, as I was uh, coming out, I heard a still small voice. And it said, don't leave. Spend some more time with me. Mm. For me at that moment, I was so overwhelmed that God knew where I was at. He was still communicating with me despite where I was at and what I was going through. It overwhelmed me even to this day. And even just a sidebar, I was talking to somebody last week and we were just having a general conversation and I couldn't keep it together. And I started crying and I said, man, it blows me away how much God loves me 
And it's hard at times for me to fathom how much he loves me, you know, even knowing the next second where I would be, what I would say, what I would do. But he still loved me. And it blows me away to this very moment that he loves me. And forgive me, I'm making it personal because I know he loves all of us. Mm, mm. Jesus. I still left for work, but I was in awe that he was still concerned about me. Psalms 139, 7 and 8. I never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. He's letting me know that I am with you, son, no matter what, because I called you. I called you. Sunday being the last day of my work week. I worked four days on, four days off. By this time, we were on a weekend. Normally, we have the Sunday paper in the break room. I'm looking at the Sunday paper. This is my last break. Boom. There were some guns. Ha! I said, I'm going to ride down to here when I got off took the little flyer or the little thing with me I was riding on down there and this was the day that I made a decision that I was going to take my life I made a decision now I was thinking it through because I said man I don't want to leave her with that scar I didn't want to leave my kids but I didn't know how to get out. Even though I knew God was there, but I didn't know how to get out. I was trying everything. Have you ever noticed, you know, your kids acting up, but they're jumping around, and, but they just need attention. And no matter what I did, everybody went right, mm, and they walked right on by. And I'm like, God, I just need some help. So I went down there. I'm at the counter. Mm. <laughs> ah, even though things seemed better, I was still left alone with my thoughts. But God, <laughs> after I went to the store and I inquired about the guns, while at the uh, counter, a Navy buddy, me and him, Man, he blessed my soul when we was rolling together because that brother was on fire and we was running around. We was going to evangelize the whole base. Yo, you get Jesus. You get Jesus. You get. We was running around doing it. You know what I'm saying? And they never seen it coming. He called me up on the phone out of nowhere. And I hadn't talked to him in a while. Out of nowhere. What you doing? Like, you know how Mike Baker say, what you doing? That's how he came. I said, uh, nothing, I'm in the store. So I was hoping that he would let up and leave me alone. But he didn't. In the store doing what? Well, since you asked, I'm in the store, and I'm at the counter, and I'm about to buy a gun. Why are you about to buy a gun? And this is the type of dude he is. I said, brother, I said I made a decision, and I'm tired. I know it's not the right decision. It may cost me everything. But I said, brother, today, I was going to end it. He said, Ace, put the gun down, turn around, and leave. Do you ever remember <laughs> the story where a guy was in the ocean? And everybody came by to rescue him. And he said, I'm waiting on God. <laughs> I knew this was God. I didn't need no more. I knew and I obeyed and I turned around and I walked away. And 
then he's begin to minister to me, encourage me. Mm. In Romans 15 and 1, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, not pleasing ourselves. Starting to come around, my speech, my thoughts begin to change, feeling more upbeat, getting a little stronger. Bam! I got sick got pneumonia so now I'm out for almost a month from work and mind you through this whole ordeal this is how it was going getting sick going through situations was coming out of nowhere like where did that come from you know boom misunderstandings so I got pneumonia I came back like right before Christmas. So they had to schedule out for overtime and all that. So, you know, I was like in the middle of the, the group to get overtime. So I was trying to weather, see if the, the old heads was going to get it. Because I was like, I've been out. Yo, let me get it. So I, I kind of went on a little petitioning. Hey, 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 man, what you, you know, because I wanted to get a little overtime, a little, little money in the pocket, all that. And something happened. Something happened. And I don't know what it was. And I got into this argument. I got into a big argument over some petty stuff. I didn't see it coming. I mean, we went in. This dude was big. He was male, but he was chunky. And he, we went into it. And we was in the office. And I said, man, it looked like you want to get me. And I'm in there looking like, what am I going to grab? Because it's going to be me or him. That messed me up. Apostle asked one week, he said, how many hits can it take before you give up? That was it. I was done. I was over. Done. I had enough. So we go through. The new year comes. I work one more day um, um, into the new year, the first three days. And then on the uh, fourth, I think I was off the fourth. Uh, the fifth was the day I experienced a pain in my thigh that was overwhelming, in my groin rather. And I was like, yo, we went to my niece's little thing and she was, uh, cause she was going into the army. Um, thank God she ain't make it in there. She should have went to the Navy, but. <laughs> anyway, but anyway, <laughs> but anyway, she uh, went, um, we went there on our way home. <laughs> I was in so much pain. I had, I had Mother Gray riding with me, Mother Ozzie, and uh, <laughs> she said she was praying because <laughs> I was flying <laughs> because I was in pain. And we lived on a hill. And so I remember we had our granddaughter and my wife was like, hey, come down and get her. I said, baby, I can't do it. I'm sorry, I can't do it. And so we get her in the house. <laughs> this is funny to me. So this is her first time away from her mother. So it was hard. Man, you never know, your grandkids soften your heart. Man, she cried all night long. I was in pain. And the funny thing, she was praising God. Ah, hold up. Ah, ah, ah. And I am not lying. <laughs> am I right, babe? This was all night, and I'm in pain. I am literally in pain. So my wife, the next day, she said, hey, babe, let's go to the emergency room. I said, babe, I'm going to take a couple Motrin. This, this was the Navy's famous thing, the military. Give you some Motrin for everything, vitamin M cure all <laughs> and so I said give me one more day I should have listened to her the next day <laughs> it was over it was over I got out to bed and I went uh, down the stairs and I knew something wasn't right but I made it down the stairs <laughs> got down to the bottom and couldn't get back up I panicked and I called my sister Hey, look, hey, I just, I just lived that down last week. I just got over it because she blessed me out. 
My sister called her, and she came down and got me. Ah, I'm right up in the bed, and you call your sister. <laughs> I, I get it. <laughs> what could I say? I panicked. I, this was something that I never experienced. I didn't know what to do. I should have kept my hind parts in that bed. <laughs> you know, so it blew me away. And this is where it began. So now she rushes me to the hospital. I'm in the hospital. She called the ambulance. She rushed me to the hospital. I want to tell you one part, but I can't. <laughs> I want to tell it, but I can't. I'm going to keep that one. <laughs> this one might be a private one. <laughs> I'm going to keep this one. <laughs> but uh, so the ambulance comes and everything. And, um, you know, we go down to the hospital. They take us to Riverside Hospital. Um, uh, my wife is up there. Uh, they took me to the ER. They ran all kind of tests. Um, they checked everything out and everything. And, uh, and excuse me for a minute. I just want to back up real quick. You know how God will say that he makes a way of escape? 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. He said he makes a way of escape. But see, when God does something, see, our mind, see, we put God in a box on everything, you know. And I think we do better now because we're maturing in him. But I didn't know how God was going to bring me out. I never expected that he was going to bring me out that way. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 say, No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted by, beyond what you do, what you are able. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. He is able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may, may be able to bear it. I thank him for that. But I didn't know. I had no idea. So God knows when to bring you out of a situation. It may not look like what you think. I could not walk. I could not use my right side. I was paralyzed on that one side. The paramedics took me to Riverside to the ER they ran uh, they ran all kind of tests CT scan x-ray EKG and whatever else they had up in there I was moved to my room shortly after that the doctor came in verifying what had happened like I said earlier it was on the left side of my brain temporal lobe As I was writing this, this still was overwhelming to me. Just reliving it. <laughs> it, it. It really blessed me. So, on the right side, so the doctor said that it could get worse within those two weeks. So, my paralysis could get to a place where I might not have come back. But God got the final say. So he recommended that I go to rehab. He recommended that I go because it's an aggressive form of rehab. So I went. Um, eventually I went. Um, there was some miscommunication in there. But I thank God that, um, you know, he was in control. He was in control of the situation. One of the things that with this rapid, um, the recovery time is best at the first three months. Some say four, three, whatever. But at that time, you want to get on it right then and there because of the simple fact that you may not get it back. So with that, the first three months... And then over time, it will gradually come back. If it comes back. Mm. So, in Riverside, I was up there for several days until they got a bed for me at rehab, at the rehab. 
you know, and like I said, these were challenging times for me and my wife. But you know, one of the funniest things during this whole time is funny to me. I had a stroke, a life-changing thing that could alter my life for my, my, my forever. Done. I was laying up in that bed, like while I was on this side, laying up in that bed, and I had so much peace. It was like the weight of the world was lifted off me. Mm. Philippians 4 and 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Man, it was mind-blowing. And then he said, I felt like Abba said in Matthews 11 and 28, come to me, son. I understand, and I'm paraphrasing now, I understand that you're weary and burdened. Come in here. I'm going to give you some rest, son. That's what I felt that he said to me, that I'm going to give you some rest. As AC would say, Boog, come on in here, Boog, I'm going to give you some rest. <laughs> so they transferred me over to the rehab. Uh, we met the staff, and they explained the treatment plans. I had speech therapy. I had speech, physical, and occupational therapy. Physical therapy is working uh, with the arms, legs, and all that. Uh, occupational therapy. Uh, more with the hands, different things, motor skills and all that. Um, so, you know, and they told me that, they told us that it would be aggressive. I was nervous, but I was ready. I shared a room with someone. They had to move me into my own room because there was an overwhelming outpour of love. See, God is funny. See, when I thought that I was by myself, when I thought that nobody cared, Man, you talking about the people that came through? It blew my mind. Even when I told them at my job when I was in Riverside Hospital, they were coming. When I got over to the rehab, they were coming and coming. And my sister said, she looked at me, she said, I thought you said that them people were crazy at that job. I said, yeah, some of them. I said, some of them. I said, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know how sometimes when things go on, you got spectators, some that come that are really concerned, then you got some that come to, hmm, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I was thankful that that was a part of my recovery. Mm, that was a part of my recovery. So that happened. I spent, uh, 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 once I got there, uh, there was like a couple days. And then I realized why I was there. <laughs> I realized why I was there. I felt like Joseph, Genesis 50 and 28. You intended it to harm me, but God intended it for my good. He brought me to this position so I could save many lives. I was like, whoa, got in there. It was a lady. I don't know if Rob has the picture, but it was a lady. <laughs> oh, she was an Asian lady. Oh, her. That one right there. That was, we called her drill sergeant. She Once she got to know my name, I'm in a wheelchair scooting with one hand. <laughs> Mr. Wilds, <laughs> come here. Let's go. At first, I was like, get away from me, woman. But I realized it was for my good. And once I realized that, I jumped on board with her. So she got me before breakfast, after breakfast, before lunch, after lunch. She worked me. But I realized that she had this personality. <laughs> and I needed that personality. <laughs> So when I, what had happened, I, I don't know where I'm at here. So what had happened was we linked up because it was death in there. People were dying. 
Some had strokes like me, you know, on one side, left side, right side. Some people had strokes where it affected their whole body. Some people didn't know if they was going to make it. I linked up with her. Woo! And we turned that place around. It was laughter. We were encouraging. You know, I had, see, when you go through these things, like Nikita, Nikita was determined. She had big faith that she was, I didn't know, she was like, I don't know how I'm going to make it through, but I know my grandmama's faith, my sister's faith, I'm going to make it through. So we got in there and we began to laugh. We began to play and we was working. Like Big Daddy King said, I go to work. Mm. Woo, man. So we was working hard, man. And so I was thankful for that because what happened was it was almost like I was the example. Now I know I'm not Jesus or so none of that far from it and I'm not, but I was that example of Jesus to them. And I was determined to work. I was like Kobe. I was determined to outwork anybody. Like Apostle and, and, and PV always say, we're we going to outgive anybody. Nobody going to beat us in giving. I was determined. And so we flowed. So if it was something, so, so if I had to walk to the end of the stage, I would say, no, let's walk over there to the organ. You know what I'm saying? So if I had to uh, uh, press my leg up and she said, do it 10 times, I tried to do it 20 times because they were all watching me. And I went ahead. My wife always say, when I got an audience, I like to perform. Well, at that time, that was the best time to perform. And I performed for them. Because what had happened was, they followed my lead. It got so deep that patients from upstairs, uh, 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 physical therapists from upstairs was like, yo, what's going on here? Yo, this is where the life is. This is where the life. Jokers was coming to the floor. Everybody laughing. Now, don't get me wrong now. I don't want to say everybody because you still have those skeptical people. But that's all right. Because, see, that was hitting them too. That was hitting them. And we encouraged each other. Mm, mm, mm. That was a beautiful time. I'm going to tell you, I don't know where I'm at in my notes, but I'm going um, to um, try and figure out where I'm at. But during that time, it was truly a blessing. Like I said, we encourage each other. I told you I was the example. And here, Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. We had times with our times we celebrated each other we celebrated our victories we celebrated our failures we encouraged each other man I, I at that time in my life I was so happy I was so full of joy and I was really thankful but this is one thing oh let me say this and um staff I told you staff was coming to the floor and others bringing their patients and so on and so on this atmosphere, which is conducive for healing, the atmosphere. The Bible tells us about laughter as a medicine. It was a blessing. Mm, it was a blessing. One morning, my PCP, as Nikita eloquently said it, <laughs> um, she came in my room about 5.30 in the morning. Now, mind you, I'm still getting my Z's. So I roll over, and I see her. <gasps> Startle. You <laughs> see me performing, babe. <laughs> and um, I looked up at her, and she was almost crying. Asa, I am so sorry. I went through my notes. I went through everything, the charts, everything. I didn't see it. She said, I missed it, and I'm sorry. 
I was like, whoa. I'm sitting there looking at her like, whoa. That you cared about me that much to come down here at 530 or 430, whatever, to get here and to say that to me? That you cared about me? Man. Hey, she's still my doctor today. I ain't get rid of her. That she did that. One thing I love about her, she's in that holistic. She, when she sits there, we'll talk about sports. We'll talk about the Yankees, the Eagles, whatever. We'll talk about life. Uh, but she's, she's gauging. She's finding out where I'm at. Where are my stressors? What am I going through? Because she can properly diagnose and I said, I love that, man. I love her, man. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. So, so now we went through all that. And one of my goals was, oh, I don't want to, this was another pivotal point for me. My family came up. And my family came up. And this is the favor. I told you they gave me another room, put me in a room by myself. Then another time, my family came up. It was like family we're reunion. You know what I'm saying? We was all in the room. We had the babies. I'm talking about nieces, nephews, sons, granddaughters, grandsons, uh, moms. Everybody was up there. They brought food. We up in there having a good I'm sitting in the wheelchair. We having a good time. God gave me favor in that place. And it blew my mind, you know? It blew my mind. <laughs> I did have one moment there. I had a meltdown. I struggled. I was in the room by myself. I was in the room by myself. I was getting tired of those needles because they gave me needles, blood thinners in my stomach. They always had to check my bladder to make sure it was releasing. They always had to do all these things. And then that particular night, I was reliving what had happened. I had a pain in my, my groin, the same pain. And I started freaking. There was nobody around me. I really started freaking. But one of the brothers that I know, we used to go to church with, I've known since I, we've been out here. He said, call me. And I hesitated, but I picked up that phone and I called him. And he answered right away. And that brother went in. I think he called down Isaac, Jacob, Abraham. <laughs> I think he called everybody. But after we hung up, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> and so that helped me. And see, I was glad that that happened behind the scene and not in front of everyone. Even though I know they would have rallied, I believe in my heart, but I'm glad it happened. So I was refreshed to move on. Now, it's time to go. I accomplished my goal. I went through. I came. Uh, I'm, I'm walking to the car. I'm no longer in a wheelchair. I pushed myself. I went above and beyond. People were, be, were, were baffled the recovery that I had because I was pushing. So I walked to the car, went, got out, had to do outpatient, did all that. It was a different atmosphere, very professional, dry. Yes, Mr. Walls, do this, do that. It was dry, but I had a, I had a plan, and I pushed. I got off. I had a quad cane. Got off, got a regular cane. After that, flowing, doing my thing, you know. Then I, um, I got my license. I didn't lose my license. But I had to take a driving test, and I took that. I took my driving test, and um, I was rolling again, dog. <laughs> I was rolling. But what had happened was, after I started rolling, I, was, I, I, I had met a gentleman. Um, I was still playing basketball, all that. Still, I wasn't finding no relief. But I met a gentleman, we played, and he wanted me to play with him in a 40 and over league at the time. And I said, no problem. But, of course, everything happened, and I didn't have his number at the time. So what had happened was uh, I went up to the base. He seen me, and I told him what had happened. He said, uh, all right, no problem. We talked a little bit. Then I tur turned to him, and I said, man, can you help me? 
to get it back, to get it going. Now, thank you, Holy Spirit. I left out another part. When um, before that, I went to church, and I knew it was something I was trying to remember. It was a space in between the time that I got my license back. I went to church, and I don't know who was singing or who was doing praise and worship. I just like to think it was Elder Gail because, or shall I say Prophet Gail, because, you know, she'll tell you about healing in a minute. She don't play with that. And so somebody hollered out, there's healing. So I'm just naturally assumed that it was her. And so they were saying it was healing. I think we were still at, um, I, th I believe we were still at uh, Living Waters. And so the Destiny Center. So um, I heard it and I got up and I went over there. I, I was on the corner and I just threw my hands up and I said, Lord, forgive me for all that I done. I repented and I praised him. I worship. And he said, what are you going to do for it? He said, what are you going to do for it? And I started screaming. I started trying to move as much as I could to stay balanced. And next thing you know, I felt like electricity going through my fingers, my hands coming down my arms. And I was like, whoa. And I was standing there like, okay, God, whatever you want to do, God. And it was coming down my arms. And by that time, I think other people realized hey, something's happening up here. And they started moving. And not intentionally, but they started bumping me. And it kind of threw me off. But it was already done. It was already done. So I talked to my man, Chuck. And um, that's the guy with the basketball. And I asked him, could you help me? Because a lot of stuff, see, see, my arm was still a little, uh, little heavy. My fingers were still a little tight. Uh, my toes were still a little tight. And, um, you know, but I was on my way to recovery. I was. You know what? I want to say this real quick. During that time of recovery in the first several months, they call it a spontaneous recovery. During the first three months after a stroke, a patient might experience, I, I hope I say the word right, a phenomenon called spontaneous recovery, a skill or ability that seemed lost to the stroke, returns suddenly as the brain finds new ways to perform. It blew me away. How the body, how God made the body. It blows me away. So, so all the time, Y'all know sometimes have you like feel like you have nerves jumping or whatever? I had nerves all the time. Bing, bing. They was just firing back. Bing. So I'm jumping like, yo. So I thought something was going on until they explained it to me what was going on. The body's just finding a new way. <laughs> you know, they, they, they making a new highway. That's all it was. So I was uh, thankful for that. But along, I was continually doing that, and I'm working with Chuck. We started out, I couldn't even throw the ball <laughs> right here. Then I couldn't even th shoot the ball to the hoop. It would go below the net. But as time went on, every Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday, we kept at it. We kept at it. Boom. Got to a place. I said, hey, man, I want to try a little one-on-one. -on -one. Play some one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, them dudes, they wasn't nice. <laughs> They beat the brakes off me. <laughs> but as time went on, I started recovering. And now I'm out there with the big boys, and I'm doing my thing. So, of course, they still wasn't nice. <laughs> they were shaking me up. And, 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 and I thank God for Chuck, that he said, y'all know what happened to this man? Y'all think y'all did something? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, 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 and my whole thing was, yo, do it to one of these young boys. Then if you do it to a young boy, I, I'll be impressed with you. I, I'll put some speck on your name. But you just shook up an old man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so anyway, that was a part of my recovery. That was my journey back. I had goals, and I met them. It was hard. It wasn't easy, 
but I had a determination to overcome. I had a determination to fight. I had a determination not to settle. I knew who my savior was. I knew who my daddy was. So I already knew that I had the victory, but I had to claim it. See, I had that hope when I talked about that hope. Wow, that hope. Hebrews 4, 6, uh, excuse me, Hebrews uh, 6, 19. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's sanctuary. Hope was my anchor that I knew I could press through, that I could go on. My faith was off the charts during this period. So I just want to tell you with stroke, if anybody may might be experiencing it or, or think or see somebody or whatever, there's an acronym that says FAST. F, ask the person to smile. <laughs> Nikita, <laughs> she hit that smile thing. Arms, ask the person to raise both arms. Speech, ask the person to repeat, excuse me, repeat a simple phrase. Time. If the person failed at any part of this test, call 911. I am thankful that they allowed me to speak today. I just want to leave you with this. Speak life to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Love yourself. These things are important. Find somebody that you can confess your faults to. It's important. Change your perspective, the way you see things, the way you think. Put on the full armor of God. Put on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, having the mind of Christ. These things are very important when you're going through. One thing, I, another thing I want to say is that I broke it down and went to my past. And I wanted to show you, even going back to what Apostle talked about, I think it was coming from the dark side, dealing with your mind. My mind was warped. And I came from that dark side and how God allowed me to come to the marvelous light, how he restored me during that time how he did not give up on me. See, I thought God left me, but he kept sending little things to show me, I'm still with you, son. Son, I got my radar on you. Matter of fact, I got my eye on you. I'm only gonna let you go so far. And that's what he's telling us. See, we can overcome the obstacles, the things that we go through, but you have to be grounded in him. The Bible says when you... um. Uh, 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 are tempted or trials come to count it all joy I understand it's hard when you're in there I get it but the joy of the Lord is our strength stay connected to the Lord stay connected to friends love carried me over love the Bible says it never fails I am thankful for the love that people showed me RCC I didn't even know half the people here at that time but they still cared about me. And I am thankful and grateful that God loved me through it all, despite my imperfections, despite my faults. God loved me. And I am thankful. And I am better for that. I love him so much. I am so grateful. If you ever hear me praying, you always hear me saying, I'm thankful because I am. This is my story and he brought me through. So I am thankful that he loves me. He knew me in my mother's womb. He knew where I was going to fall and slip and bump my head. But I learned to get up and repent to give God the glory. I'm sorry, Father, for going down there. You told me not to go, but I overrode, Holy Spirit. But I thank you for bringing me back. 
I thank you for not taking your hand off me. I never would have made it if you was not holding my hand. You are a way maker. God, I thank you for knowing my name. I thank you, God. I thank you for changing my name, God. God is intimate with me. I'm intimate with God. God wakes me up in the middle of the night with songs, singing songs over me. It was one song. I don't know if you can play it, Rob, but it was one song that blessed me. Sometimes we don't think that God sees us, but he sees us. So I am thankful today for this time that y'all allowed me to share, to grace this pulpit. I thank you, senior leadership. I love y'all. I thank you, all the leaders in RCC, Internet Church. I thank you for just allowing me to come into your homes tonight. I pray that you have been blessed. I pray that somewhere in this message, you have been touched. And I just say thank you. And as I leave, I just ask that you listen to this song. Amen. See what the Lord has done. Can you see what the Lord has done? What we waited for has come to pass. Sometimes we have to take that moment to look in the mirror and just see what the Lord has done. If you're home and you got a time, go to that mirror and look and see what the Lord has done. You are marvelous in his eyesight. You are wonderfully and cheerfully made. Oh God, we love you. God, I thank you. testimony of what God has done. Mm. My Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Look at what the Lord has done. He has done great and marvelous things. Not only in my husband, Elder Ace's life, but in my life as well. This is a continuation of Conqueror Sunday. We heard from Nikita as she shared as well. And these are evidence of God's mercy and God's grace on our lives. If you ever took for granted his grace, if you ever took for granted his mercy, as Elder said, 
look in the mirror and see what God has done. You're not where you were five years ago, 10 years ago, a year ago, but because of his grace and mercy, you are here today standing strong as a conqueror. You are more than, you're not just a conqueror, you're more than a conqueror. Why? Because God's in your life. He is your helper. He is your creator. He's the one that gives you strength to overcome. We cannot do it within our own selves, but only through him we can conquer those obstacles in life, those pains in life, all those things that we go through that looks like mountains. In Mark it says, if you have the faith, you can say to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and it will happen. And that's part of being a conqueror. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy and your grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Hard to move from this place because I'm, <laughs> I'm an emotional wreck right now because I, I lived through what he lived through and I felt what he felt. But to God, to God be the glory. And you heard him say over and over again, but God, just those two words, they sound simple, but yet powerful, powerful. But God, put a but God on your situation, put God on your illness, put God on your debt, put God, but God, but God. No matter what it looks like, it's a but God situation. Step back and let God do it. Amen. Amen. I'm going to do some updates. We just thank you, Elder Asa, for that awesome word, because that's definitely a word for right now, a word to strengthen us on this journey, because this is a journey. We're only here temporarily as pilgrims. This is not where we live. We're, we're just visiting here before we leave to go home. But it is a journey that we all have to go on. But God, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I'm trying to move on, trying to move on, trying to move on. Hallelujah. I got a couple of updates, praise God. We're going to talk about the uh, ways to give. If you can bring that up. You could click the donate button on the website. It's a safe and secure site. You could also text your amount and code to 84321. Or you can mail or drop it off at the office. You can even, we even have drop boxes inside the church. We have the mail drop as well. I'm old school, so <laughs> I'll probably bring mine in, walking in, put it in the drop box, or put it inside the church because uh, that text and stuff, I don't know about all that. But anyway, to God be the glory. Amen. Or you can even call your contributions in at 757 820 0717 and you also can place your offering in the envelope in the uh, tithe box located right here in the sanctuary when you're here in the house and also um, being able to uh, to give according to what God lays on your heart your tithe and offering your sacrificial seeds and it's going to good ground amen amen, amen. okay this Sunday we going to have the L-I-T, the Lit Young Adults. They're going to be ministering this Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Portland Green will be ministering. Praise the Lord. They're going to bring the energy, y'all. Y'all better be here. Be here or be square. <laughs> Either way it goes, y'all. Gonna, We're going to have a good time with the young adults. Y'all come out, help celebrate, so help support them as they go forth in the Lord. It's a wonderful thing to see the young people praise God. Amen. Amen. And following right after uh, our lit 
um, service, we're going to have Family Harvest Fellowship. And that be immediately following service in the courtyard. We're going to have uh, games. We're going to have movies. We're going to have treats for the kids. It's for whoever wants to come out. Mom, dad, grandpa, grandma, the kids, cutting them. Everybody, everybody, y'all come on out and y'all be blessed with the Family Harvest Fellowship. Amen. And also, we also have our Minister Spiritual Gifts and Training, the MSG, through November 10th through the 12th. If y'all haven't been through the MSG, you're missing a treat. If you're always wondering if you're hearing from God and you don't know for sure, come on out and register for this training. It will help you understand and be able to discern sharper and be able to go out into the hedges and the highways and be able to give that word in confidence. Amen. Or you can check your e-blast or call 820-0717 for the schedule and the registration details. Amen. Save the date. New Disciples Orientation Saturday, November 19th at 11 a.m. via Zoom. Email newdisciples at rccva.church and all are encouraged to attend. This is also serves as a refresher course for us that's been in the house for a while and you're not sure what's going on, come on out. Come on out and be refreshed, be restored, and be rejuvenated so that you'll know where we're going in this vision that our overseers have, our leaders have, and you won't be on the sidelines and I wonder what's going on. Come on down and see. Come on down and see for your own self, okay? Bless God, bless God. Well, we thank you all on tonight in this church. Thank you for joining us tonight and hearing this awesome word. This was a continuation of Conqueror Sunday, and I pray that you have been truly, truly blessed by hearing the testimony of two awesome overcomers. If you did not know, if you have any doubts or had any doubts how God blesses and loves us, you just got two excellent examples of God's mercy and his grace and how much he loves, loves his children. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you on tonight, oh God, for your mercy and for your grace, oh God. God, we thank you, God, for just allowing us to be in your presence, oh Father God, one more time, oh Father God. Allow us, Father God, to just partake of the words that was shared on tonight and that was shared on Sunday, God, to encourage us, oh God, that we can make it, that we can be overcomers, that we can conquer that thing that seems insurmountable, oh God. But by your grace and by your strength, oh God, we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. So God, we just thank you on tonight. And we just want you to know, God, we love you, oh God, more than anything, God. And we know, God, that you love us because you gave your son Jesus for us, oh God. So God, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you. In Jesus' name. Restoration is now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless God.